afternoon, East Texas. Welcome back to East Texas. Now we are joined via Zoom today from the Texas Panhandle uh, by Texas A&M Forest Service member Sean Dugan. Sean, thank you so much for bringing uh, for coming on to our show and talking about this issue. We haven't heard a lot about it here in East Texas, so we're really happy to have you here. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Now let's go ahead and jump right on in. One of the fires was over 500,000 acres and as of this morning, 0% contained. Now, can you break down for us if you're able to how many individual fires there are right now and what is the containment level? So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 total. Uh, and there are varying levels of containment. Uh, the <clears throat> Smokehouse Creek is, of course, the biggest. And that, uh, that acreage has actually been bumped up to 850,000 acres as of this morning with 3% um, containment. So we're going up in acreage, but we're also going up in containment. So a little bit of good news there. Now, wind gusts have been coming up in the panhandle up to 60 miles an hour and flames are shooting up as high as 20 feet. The grass is also extremely dry. Have all of these factors um, impacted how quickly this fire has been able to spread and how hard it's been to combat? Yes, that's that's correct. We have a situation here in which a certain level of variables just came together in the perfect situation. Uh, create uh, a, a condition where these fires are just moving extremely fast and are and are very resistant to control. Now, what makes them so resistant to control? Is it that dry grass or the wind gusts? What makes it harder to fight these types of fires? So it's um, it's really three things. It's um, the low relative humidity, the dry fuels, and the wind. And normally. With, um, high fire danger where really elevated levels of fire activity we use aircraft and this situation is unique in that uh, when you have wind blowing you know say 50 60 miles an hour uh, they don't let us use aircraft and the fires essentially at uh, about two football fields a minute which means that it outruns our efforts uh, with our heavy equipment and our fire engines so far, a disaster declaration has been put in place by Texas Governor Greg Abbott for 60 counties. What does this mean in terms of resources? Does this allow more resources to be diverted to the panhandle to combat these fires? It does. So we have, um, as of yesterday, we've requested numerous resources from within the state and from out of the out of state. Uh, we also have aircraft coming in. Uh, and with a disaster declaration, we'll have um, additional recovery efforts for anybody whose property has been impacted. Now, moving on to our next question, the fire jumped state lines earlier and is now moved into Oklahoma. Does this change anything about the approach to putting out these fires? As in the coordination with another state's fire service, is that now changing the way these fires are being fought? It is changing it in a way, but with these big fires anywhere in the country, there's a lot of cooperation with states. Uh, Oklahoma has come down to help us out with our fires. We've gone up to Oklahoma to help out, help them out with their fires. And, you know, a fire doesn't necessarily abide by the distinctions that we draw on a map. And uh, everybody within the fire service understands that and um, and other out. Now, last question for today, evacuations being called for numerous counties over the past 48 hours. Do we have a timeline as of now when these people can expect to return home if they still have a home standing at this point? Is there any timeline for right now of when this fire could expect to be extinguished? So all the evacuations have been lifted. People are able to go back to their homes or to check on their homes. Uh, and all the road closures have been lifted, though, as of uh, I think about an hour ago, a couple of other road closures have been put in place uh, for I believe. But uh, most of the areas are available for people to come and check out what uh, what the condition is. And there are evacuation centers in place uh, that uh, came open yesterday or are still open today. Now, I just thought of one more question, if I can have a moment more of your time. We do have that cold front being pushed through right now through the majority of Texas. Can we expect that to have any help or give any help, I should say, on helping extinguish these fires, that cold front? Absolutely. So so yesterday, control was uh, very difficult. Our, our main operation, other than trying to put in line, 
was to notify the communities as soon as we knew where the fire was going based on the wind direction, which was very difficult yesterday because as y'all direction was shifting, uh, but really our main effort was trying to get people out. But today the winds are, have calmed down extremely compared to yesterday and uh, the sun is out things are calm and we're being able to uh, get a lot of work done. All right, Sean, is there anything else that I have not asked that you would like to let our viewers know or anybody else watching that is being affected by these fires? Uh, well, you know, I think the main message for, for these outbreaks or the main question that people have is, you know, how can this happen? What can we do to stop it? Um, you know, what, what's the best approach? Really the best approach when the National Weather Service issues uh, red flag warnings, <clears throat> which basically means that the public needs to be careful with anything that might cause a spark, uh, I would suggest to everybody to abide by that and limit, uh, you know, things like grilling or um, uh, anything that might cause a spark on those days. Do we know if that is what caused one of these fires, someone outside grilling, outside burning? Do we have a reason for the fire to happen? So uh, our law enforcement are investigating it today. Yesterday, we were preoccupied with the fire itself. Hopefully, sometime in the near future, we can we can figure out the actual cause. Alrighty, once again, Sean Duggan with the TAMU Forest Service. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe out there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.